Okay, we're gonna go over creating custom skis for a client. Uh, you start off with a component, what, uh, normally a specialty component, and that specialty component will help us derive our ISO symbol that we want to use. Normally you'll coordinate with your engineer or the client to see what exactly they want the representation to look like. Sometimes you'll have your own uh, freedom to pick, but it's good to get buy-in uh, with whatever you come up with as a final design. Once you have your uh, ISO ski designed up, uh, you're going to go ahead and open up your symbol library, which is up here. Click it once, just give it a second. Uh, you can also get to the symbol ski library from your start menu under CADWorks for the year that you're running. You just go over here and you click on symbol editor under CADWorks 2017 R1. So now that we're in the symbol editor, we're going to go ahead and grab the component that most matches the one that we're building. In this case, we're building a pressure control valve, and it's based on ball valve uh, core. So you go ahead and go to your ball valve core, expand that out, and you're going to go ahead and copy or right-click that ball valve category and click New Symbol. After you go into the new symbol, you're going to go ahead and pick a, a unique ski. It's good to have an awareness over what the ski library currently has available. For example, you can't use VB because VB is already being used for a ball valve. So in this case, I'll use Z. Z. Um, you can also help because of the limited number of options with only two characters, you can add in a numeric. So I could put Z1, which we'll do in this case. And we'll put star star. The star star indicates that this symbol can be used for more than just one end type. You can use it for flanges, socket weld, screwed. You don't have to limit it right here. We're going to say this is for a pressure control valve. And we'll even go a step farther and say it's specifically for a fisher. And normally you don't want to eliminate it by, by vendor, but in this case we'll do it just to show that this uh, particular pressure control valve is meant for fisher products. Um, you're not going to change the original ski. You've already based it on that when you right-click the VB on the other side. Um, you do want to copy the graphics so you have a good starting point. Um, is your new one going to have a spindle? So the spindle is that little top actuator that can rotate around the component. Um, in this case, we are not going to want that because we're always going to want the, the symbol to show in, a, in the top bottom direction. So click OK. Um, you can immediately see that it has added in the Z1 under the ball valve type under valve category. Z1 star star. Okay. Um, come here. Uh, we do not want this this circular uh, symbology in our pressure control valve, even though it is a ball valve, and we could leave it. Um, I'm going to come here, and we're going to delete out this thing. You can cut it, or you can just press delete after you select the component. Okay, so we've uh, deleted out the circle. If you see this top right dialog right here, that shows you how this will look when it's ISOed out. So it puts it on an isometric plane. Um, in this case, all we're going to be adding in is a actuator with a little uh, DCV in the middle. So start off with some line work. Okay, I want to go a little high because we are going to be throwing in that middle piece. Okay. Um, left click to start, left click to hit another node, and then right click or escape to uh, get out of that after you're starting it. So we're going to go ahead. Now, you might be tempted to draw a circle and throw that into place, but since this is a half circle, you can't cut the line work like you can in AutoCAD. So that means you're going to have to draw it with line segments, which can be a little bit cumbersome, but worth it in the long run. We're going to go ahead and pop that first one in there, and then we're going to move over one. Just want to get the basic concept down here initially because you're going to add in nodes as you come closer to finishing it. So you can see that looks okay, it's not really great. So, what you do is you click on the object, right click in the middle, and click add point. And that'll allow you to bend out the object a little bit more to make it look more like an arc. So, there. Two. 
You want to make sure you're doing the same thing to both sides when you have something that is uh, that's mirrored over a bit. Just follow the line work. Come here and add a node. Add a node. Here. You don't have to go. You gotta be careful. You can pick this stuff up. Should be putting it back exactly where you found it too. Okay. It's not the most user friendly thing in the world, but once you get used to it, it's not that bad. Um, I have to check the and it's a little bit troublesome. But you keep fiddling with it till you get it just about right. Okay. And once you have it the way you want it, you can see in the isometric representation that it looks pretty much like what we want here. We're going to go ahead and throw in that little dynamic right there. Okay. And we seem to have about what we originally started with. So we're going to go ahead and save the file. Um, the way this is done, this is all live too. As you're making this, this is automatically saving the material to uh, to the database of this of this symbol editor. So you can see that Z1 is still there. Double click it to make sure it's saved properly. Yeah. Um, after you're satisfied, you're gonna go ahead and file. You're gonna export isogen symbols. And as you can see here, there's already a symbols file established for this client. We're gonna assume that there isn't one. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, so at the client's main folder, when you come into its isogen folder, uh, before you go into the check or the final, you want to put the symbol file right there. That way it applies to all the future uh, uh, job numbers that they'll establish. Okay, so you want to name it symbols. You don't have to put the .ac, .asc. It's going to be put automatically once you save. Okay, we just saved. Now to get that symbol file to work, you're going to have to go into your isogen I configure. <clears throat> you can again click that from up here in the in the toolbar or go through the start menu. Okay, so we are already in our client's uh, style that we want to modify, the final, which is what you should be modifying for a uh, for isogen batch run. Um, inside of the isogen configuration, you want to go to input files. In the input files, there's a summary tab, and then input files. This is basically all the unique things you want to tie in that aren't uh, default in the, uh, the software itself. So we're going to go here. Uh, if this is a new client, then they won't have the ANSI symbol. So you'll click the drop down and select ANSI symbols. And then the dot to dot. The dot to dot will let you browse to your client's isogen folder. And then you're going to click that symbols.asc that you just created. Click on open and then click save and then exit okay. and then you're good there now your uh, isogen style is tied into the symbols file you just created now we've already created a PCV a user shape PCV from earlier on we're going to go into the spec <clears throat> find that PCV and we're going to modify its ski now remember from earlier that the new ski that we created is under the valve category but this time, we're going to adjust the individual ski to Z1, which is what we created earlier. Now, in this case, this uh, PCV is a flange component. So you won't put the star star. You'll replace that asterisk asterisk with a, uh, the end type. So SW for socket weld, SC for screwed, and in this case, FL for flanged. Okay, go ahead and apply those changes. Save and save our project. With those changes made, we will refresh our spec in the plan environment. Click on the component. Okay. And to verify that the changes came through, that's a little bit upside down. Let's go ahead and try to put that. There it goes. 
Okay. To make sure that it came through properly, double click on your component, click on Isogen, and then as you can see in the symbols information area, the ski is FZ1FL. So we are solid on that. Okay. Now to test that it runs properly and the ski is connected properly, we're going to go ahead and do an Isogen out. <coughs> I have my keystone final selected. Okay, and what should come through is just a plain ISO with just that symbol ski. Okay, now you've completed creating a custom ski for a client.